Hello friends, welcome to Yogic and Modern Science. Today, uh, let's talk about the 8th and 9th Sutra of Avadhut Gita. As usual, firstly, uh, let me read the sutras in Hindi and then I'll try to explain uh, the hidden meaning in the sutra according to the eternal principles of yogic science. And in the end, our respected Sharmaji will be explaining in Hindi the same sutras from his own experience. So firstly, let me read the sutras. The eighth sutra says, Manas karm, jitne ki shub aur ashub hai, mere ko nahi lagte. Charirik karm, jo ki shub aur ashub hai, mere ko nahi lagte hai. Vanikrit karm bhi, shub aur ashub, mere nahi hai. Kyonki, gyan rupi amrit shuddh aur indriyon ka avishay mein hu. Now let's move to the Sutra 9. Sutra, Sutra 9 says, Manhi nishya karke gagan ke akar wala hai. Manhi nishya karke sarv or mukh wala hai. Man se atma atit hai. Mani sampoon vishwa hai. Parmarth se man bhi sakte nahi hai. So friends, in Sutra 8, Dattatreji Maharaj is referring to two things. Broadly speaking, there are two things. One is where he talks about all the karmas, whether it is uh, psychic karma, psychological, mansik, or physical karmas, or karma which is accumulated through the speech, speech related karma. So these, when he talks about these three types of karmas, it means he is referring to the energy of Prakriti, according to the yogic science, right? The system we propose in that system, the Prakriti or you can say the horizontal energy, okay, that is Prakriti. So all these karmas, from moment to moment, okay, they are taking place in the in this Prakriti, right? And where he says these karmas don't touch me, right? I am aloof from all these karmas. There is no impact of these karmas on me. I remain as it is. Then he is actually referring to the energy of pure consciousness. In the yogic science, this is the vertical energy, the energy which controls the whole prakriti. Right? So this energy controls but this energy remains untouched by any activity taking place in the whole Prakriti. Whatever creation is happening within the Prakriti, the energy which is outside of this Prakriti, okay, it remains untouched. And the same is being proposed by the Tatreji Maharaj when he says, the mansik karma means psychological karmas. Okay, whatever we think about something or somebody, whatever we imagine. Okay, so all these thoughts, imagination, belief systems, okay, all the dogmas, everything. Okay, so whenever we think, then karmas are generated. But these karmas, do not have any impact on the energy which is beyond the Prakriti. And due to that energy, the Prakriti seems to be doing everything. 
because of that energy. You can say that energy is the causal energy of the prakriti, karan energy, karan urja. Okay, so this much can be said about that energy. And later in the sutra, he says the karmas of all these three types, these karmas don't touch me and I am beyond the man, intellect, mind and intellect. I am beyond it. Okay. And according to yogic science also, the energy of pure consciousness, it is always beyond. Right? Or it is it is around the prakriti. Okay. But prakriti or this energy does not touch each other. Right? We can understand this okay, from a simple example. Okay, let me give you a very simple practical example. You see, in cricket match, okay, when two teams okay, fight with each other, then one or two important players of a team, okay, they have a great impact on the opposite team, right? And even if those player, those one or two player, okay, just take, for example, one player, okay, if that player is not in the form, okay, he's not making any run or he's not taking any wicket, okay, his performance is very, very low, okay, but even then, his very presence, okay, his very presence creates a pressure on them on the opposition, opposite team, okay? The pressure is not being created by that person, that, that player, okay, who is not in the form, but he is very, very important player. Okay, but the opposite team is taking the pressure of that player, okay? Because that player is the part of the team, okay? He is there, right? So just the presence of that player, Okay, so the presence of the player is being felt by the opposite team and they take, take the pressure of that player and due to this pressure, okay, their performance gets impacted in a negative way, right? In the same way, the energy around the Prakriti, okay, it is doing its work, right? Okay, it's, it's, work is just to be present okay and providing the energy sound energy light energy you know the power right okay but and due to this energy everything is being created everything is being done in the prakriti right okay but the energy which is around it okay it remains it always remains untouched Okay, and whatever is happening happens to the prakriti only. All these three types of karmas belong to prakriti. Because in the prakriti, we have the whole system of creation. We have the energy of sakar, nirakar, and jivatma. Right? So we have the system, system of these three components. Okay, but this system will be running. Okay, or is running, not will be, is running because of the presence of the fourth component, which is around the Prakriti. That component is not part of the system, mind it. That energy is not part of the system, but without that energy, the system of the Prakriti okay, is of no use. It cannot do anything of its own. Okay. It has its own energy, but from that energy, it cannot do anything. Okay, there is no creativity, there is no creation. The same thing is being proposed by the Tatreja Maharaj, but in the language of Shastras. Okay, his language is uh, very similar to okay, what is written in all our you know, uh, scriptures, okay, like Gita and Vedanta. Okay, so language is of all these scriptures. Okay, 
but he means the same okay as uh, we are proposing through the three principles of yogic science right and in sutra 9 he says the it is the nature of man okay or due to mind only due to mind or due to the intellect or in the prakriti because all these things are uh, you know the you can say these are the events of prakriti okay whether it is mind or intellect or whatever is taking place okay all the kriyas and karmas okay it is of prakriti so in the prakriti only means from the mind or and the intellect okay it takes all types of form he is taking the example of akash only but whatever form okay is being created or the form which we are able to see the whole creation okay it is only due to this mind and intellect right not due to due to the energy of parmatma but it is of the same uh, components right we have three components in prakriti sakar nirakar and jivatmas okay so whatever is whatever form it is taking okay it is of the same stuff nirakar akar uh, nirak, uh, nirakar sakar and jivatma right so it is of the same stuff right but it is due to the outside energy okay so this is the system okay this is the concept okay and the same thing is being proposed by the tatrajya maharaj in sutra 9 by taking one simple example the akash and he also says ye wala hai. okay it has all the faces all around right means it knows everything right but the energy which is outside, okay, it does not know anything. Okay, it is pure power. Okay, without knowing anything, it is pure power. And when he says in Sutra 9 that Atma Manke Atit, okay, then he is referring to the same, the energy of consciousness or the vertical energy, right? It is beyond Man. And Man is in the prakriti so when this energy is beyond prakriti okay then what to talk about man right so friends if we understand the system of creation and <coughs> what components are responsible for the whole creation and how are they responsible what is their role right whether the energy is real or kalpanic okay time bound energy okay or a timeless energy right you see energy which is beyond the prakriti okay that is not time bound that is timeless energy okay that is why it remains untouched and the energy which is of the prakriti it is space and time bound energy this is the difference so once the system of creation okay becomes clear okay then all the sutras will be very very clear okay to all of you so hopefully you will watch this episode try to understand the what is the principle okay what principle is working okay when the tatrajya maharaj or anybody else okay any you know atmagyani uh, proposes something okay what actually he is referring to okay it will be clear once we understand the uh, understand really not intellectually only okay but really understood okay and the the three principles of your big science then everything will be clear now I'll, i would request sharmaji to shed some more light on these two <coughs> योगिक साइंस के माध्यम से हमने पहले भी ये बात करी थी बताई थी कि इसमें जैसे कोई एक शरीर है वो एक केंद्रित चीज है और उसके केंद्र में एक एनर्जी है तो वो अपने में 
एक एनर्जी कलप रही है ऐसे ही मन भी एक केंद्रित स्थिति है बाकी तो बहुत सारा आपने डिटेल में बता दिया अब मैं योगिक साइंस के थोड़े सिद्धांत में आपको ले जाते हैं कि योगिक साइंस ये कहती है कि मन एक केंद्रित है जो चीज केंद्रित होती है उसे हमेशा बीज बोलते हैं और जो कर्म इंद्री है और जो आपकी कर्म इंद्रिया मन मन की बात करी और जिसमें शरीर की मानसिक बात करी और वाणी की बात करी तो जो कर्मों के बताए ये भी एक तरीके के हमारे शरीर में केंद्र है केंद्र तो इनको ये कलप रहे ऐसे मन भी कलप रहा है तो जो कलप रहा है वो कल्प कल्पता जब है इसमें थोड़ा सा ध्यान से सुनने वाली बात है कि कल्पता जब है जब बीज के अंदर कोई चीज होती है तब वो कलपती है कि, कि किस चीज लिए कलपती है क्योंकि वो कुछ विकसित होना चाह रही है कुछ बढ़ाना चाह रही है और वो एकदम पैक हो रखी है इसलिए पैक होने वो हम बीज बोलते हैं अब सवाल ये हम थोड़ा सा अपने ज्ञान को दूसरी तरफ ले चलते हैं बीज की तरफ में तो वो कलप रही है तो उसमें तो जैसे बीज में है तो फूल पत्ते पौधे वो तो सारे अंदर में कलप रहे हैं अगर हम दूसरी तरफ अब चलते हैं कि जिस बीज जिस पेड़ से बीज निकला था और बीज अब बीज में वो सारी कल्पना थी जो फूल पत्ते पौधे डाल छाल थी वो उसमें सब कलप रहे हैं अभी वो लगा नहीं है ना पेड़ हुआ है मगर मेरा कहना ये है योगिक साइंस के माध्यम से कि आप जिस पेड़ से वो बीज निकला है तो पेड़ के जो छाल पत्ते और डाले थी वो क्यों नहीं कलप रही है वो क्या आप बीज की कल्पना कोई कर रही है कि भाई मैं भी हमने भी बीज दिया था तो भाई साहब फिर हमें मौका मिलना चाहिए हम और एक बीज देते हैं वो नहीं कल्प रही है क्योंकि यहां ये बहुत गहरी चीज आ रही है समझ में कि जो केंद्रित चीज है वो बीज रूप है वही कल्प रही है और जो पीछे वो निकल गई उनमें ये कल्पना नहीं है तो जो कल्पना जहां नहीं है क्या वहां एनर्जी नहीं थी तो बोला वहां एनर्जी थी थी तो बोला वो कहा है बोलता वो उनका अतीत है उसमें आपके श्लोक में आया कि अतीत हम उसके अतीत में है तो वो इस जो कल्पना है जो बीज है इसके अतीत में है तो जो अतीत में है तो फिर वो कौन सी एनर्जी थी तो वो एक ऐसी एनर्जी थी जिस टाइप की जो योगिक साइंस के माध्यम से हम कहते हैं कि जब हमारी एक पड़ी हुई जो आत्मा हम जिसे नाम तो नहीं है मगर हम पड़ी हुई एक पोजिशन बताते हैं कि उसमें जो प्लस टाइप पड़ी हुई चीज है उसमें वो फूल रही है सिकुड़ रही है तो इसका फूलना और सिकुड़ना ये एक चीज आप गहराई से देखोगे तो बीज में ये काल्पनिक है ये उसका फूलना है और वो उसके डाल पत्ते पौधे वो वहां सिकुड़ चुके हैं उनमें ये चीजें नहीं है वो सिकुड़ गए दो स्थिति है तो जो मूल की जो दो स्थिति है वो बीज रूप में एनर्जी कार्य करती है और जहां फिकुड़ रही है वहां पे वो अतीत में है कार्य तो कर रही मगर अतीत में कार्य कर रही है तो ये योगिक साइंस से हमने एक सिद्धांत जो हमारे योगिक साइंस में है कि एक प्राकृतिक है एक परमात्मा की बाहर एनर्जी है जो वे सतेंद्र जी ने बताया ये कि इन दोनों को एनर्जी देने वाली एक पड़ी हुई हम जो आत्मा बोलते हैं वो तो हम इन जो तीन सिद्धांत को लेकर के बात कर रहे हैं ये तीन सिद्धांत अलग अलग भी हैं जो हमने अभी बात करी थी कुछ देर पहले सत्येंद्र जी से मगर वो गहर बहुत गहरा विषय हो जाएगा तो थोड़ा समझने के लिए भी हम 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 बता तो देंगे मगर समझ में नहीं आएगा तो बहुत भारी चीज हो जाती कि वो अलग अलग करके हम जानेंगे तो हम बात कर पाएंगे एपिसोड बना पाएंगे अगर हम इन तीनों चीजों को एक साथ रख देंगे तो जब एक ही हो गया तो अब क्यों बोल रहे हो और क्यों ये एपिसोड बना रहे हो यहाँ आ, आ जाएगी चीज तो वो चीज अभी हमने डिस्कस करी थी तो इतनी गहराई में हम अभी नहीं बात कर रहे और ना ही अभी ऐसा विचार है कोई और अगर वक्त आएगा तो करेंगे उसी टाइप में बाकी यूबिक साइंस के माध्यम से मैंने सत्येंद्र जी ने जो दो बताए थे मैंने उनको इस तरीके से बता दिया ओके सो फाइनली फ्रेंड्स वी कैन से दैट यू नो दीज थिंग्स आर वेरी वेरी डीप ओके बट दे आर 
these things are worth okay uh, worth pondering over right and these are something which has some worth in life otherwise everything else seems worthless right you see we live our life okay but we don't understand it okay what is the point of living such a life in which there is no understanding of life itself okay so i want all of you to develop this kind of understanding this deep understanding okay don't call it uh, you know spirituality spirituality or religious thought okay okay i am not saying use these terms okay but uh, at least we must be deep enough okay in our you know understanding a deep understanding should be there supreme understanding okay so that we can understand our own life okay and we can live it uh, in the real sense of life okay so i hope uh, you must have understood okay some of you know something of the sutra and next time i'll be coming up with sutra 11 and 10 and 11 thank you friends